Have you ever been sick or bedridden due to an injury? Well, you know that when we don't use our muscles, they atrophy and decrease in muscle mass. Today, we'll discuss a recently published article where researchers may have found a way to combat this process. For older adults, this can be detrimental by making it harder to stay independent and active. And the best way to recover lost muscle mass is by resistance training. But this is not always possible because it's hard. Um, so what can science provide as an alternative solution to maintain or recover muscle mass after a period of inactivity? To answer this question, we first have to understand why lack of physical activity or disuse leads to muscle atrophy. Your muscles are constantly going through a state of flux where there's protein synthesis or protein breakdown. And when the balance shifts towards more protein breakdown, you have a decrease of muscle mass. When we move and begin to move again, we can jumpstart protein synthesis. And this has been seen in experiments with young and aged rodent models. However, on the flip side, protein breakdown still occurs and occurs particularly in aging but we're not exactly sure why, and there may be multiple factors involved. But the current belief is that the onset of muscle contraction leads to an accumulation of ROS. ROS is short for reactive oxygen species. These ROS derived from mitochondria include superoxides and hydrogen peroxide that can cause damage to the cell. So most of the time when you hear ROS in biology, it's a bad thing. What? However, to combat this, the cells and tissues produce antioxidants, which cancel out ROS. Unfortunately, skeletal muscles that aren't being used will have decreased antioxidant levels as well as activity. That's the heart of the matter. How do we increase antioxidants to combat ROS activity and eliminate muscle wasting? Special cells in muscles called pericytes release helpful molecules that aid in muscle remodeling. These resilient pericytes belong to the stem and stromal cell group and produce antioxidants, which make them resistant to oxidative stress. To explore this further, scientists from the University of Illinois conducted single-cell RNA sequencing on muscle samples from mobile and immobile mice. They sorted the muscle cells based on known surface markers, and in the end, you get a map of all the cell populations in your sample as well as their gene expression. When they focused in on the pericell cell cluster, they saw that the population from the immobile mice had decreased expression of genes related to the mitochondria. Say it with me now. The mice of the side. Next, they isolated the pericytes from the mobile and immobile tissues and grew them up in culture. They then added hydrogen peroxide to see how they would respond. The pericytes from the mobile tissue had high capacity to respond to oxidative stress. However, the immobile pericytes had significantly less antioxidant ability. Together, these results match up to what we would expect. Then the researchers asked, what if we took the pericytes from the mobile tissue and put it into the immobile tissue? What would happen? Unfortunately, they did this and didn't really see any significant results. There was no reduction in oxidative stress or protein breakdown. Well, that answers it. No. Luckily, the researchers noticed that pericytes package their antioxidants in a little pocket called an extracellular vesicle, or EV for short. So the authors figured, instead of transplanting the pericytes, which don't seem to have any effect, why not transplant the EVs, which are released by pericytes, and contain the precious antioxidant material? So back to the experimental flowchart. The researchers collected pericytes from mobile tissue and stimulated them with hydrogen peroxide so they would pump out all of these EVs containing antioxidants. Then they took those EVs and injected them into the donor mice. And lo and behold, there was a, a significant improvement in muscle recovery. The authors narrowed down whatever was in those EVs to 11 proteins, but more research is needed to understand how or what is causing the muscle recovery. So there you have it. 
Antioxidants are an emerging strategy to solve muscle recovery after disuse. However, the researchers plan to do further experiments, particularly in human parasites. Hey, so while editing this, I actually came across more information that came out from Harvard University, actually, where researchers constructed a device, an implant that you can attach to the muscle and stimulate it using an electrical current. This does require a power source, uh, such as battery, and it's pretty invasive, but there are multiple approaches to tackling muscle wasting, it seems like, and this one being more of an engineering approach. Either way, exciting stuff ahead. I would love to hear what y'all think, so leave your questions, comments, and concerns in the comments below, and I'll see you in the next one. Ciao!